something that has formerly been hidden. It was God that pulled the veil back so you can see my true identity. You following me? So he had an apocalypsis. He had a revelation of who Jesus was. And so after Jesus said, flesh and blood, the law and the prophets did not reveal this to you, but my Father which is in heaven, I'm changing your name. Because you can't do what I need you to do as a weak reed. He said, you're no longer Simon, but you're Peter, a piece of the rock. And upon this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And I will give unto you the keys of the kingdom. So whatsoever you bind in heaven, bind on earth has been bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth has been loosed in heaven. Now listen to a couple of things here. He did not get keys until he got a revelation. Don't just say yes, because this right here is the key to you walking in manifestation. Because it is a violation of protocol to receive something from, apart from a revelation that you have gotten. Oh, y'all ain't get that. Y'all ain't, y'all ain't get that. Okay, let, let, me, let me read that. Okay. It is a violation of protocol for someone to walk in a manifestation that they do not have a revelation of. <laughs> God does not let things to transpire and to open until you get a revelation. Prove it. I'm, I'm, I'm here. I'm proving it right now. He said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus said, hold up. Flesh and blood didn't give this to you. This is a revelation. Now let me tell you who you are since you're walking in revelation. You're Peter. And upon this rock, not Peter, the revelation that Peter had, I will build my ecclesia, my church, and the gates of hell will not be able to prevail against it. What happened? Since you got a revelation, you get an identity change and you get keys. Listen, I'm trying to help y'all. You will never walk in anything that you do not have a revelation of. Just let that sink in. You will not walk in the manifestation of healing until you get a revelation of it. You will not walk in the revelation of deliverance until you get a revelation. Not a good message, a revelation. You will not walk in prosperity until you get a revelation of it. Information is good, but only a revelation moves you. So, so now that you got a revelation, I'm changing your identity and I'm putting keys in your hand. Because in order for you to accomplish what I need you to accomplish, you're going to have to have some authority. Keys represent authority. But let, let, I know that's, that's, that's where we stopped over the years, right? The keys represent authority. The more authority you have, the more keys you have. We, 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 we worked that every way we could work it. But how many know... That if I give Sister Tamara, I don't say, here's the keys of my Lexus. Y'all looking at me strange. He, here's the keys of my house. He said the keys of the kingdom. Get on the keyboard. We, we, we got to go deeper tonight. We got to go somewhere. You know your keys, right, for the most part? Okay, give, give me a key of C. Get, okay, give me the key of, of D. Keys of deals with sound. Keys two deals with buildings and openings. Let's keep playing. What key you in? She's in the key of D. I give you the sound to bind up some stuff, to unlock some stuff. 
Your authority is in your ability to discern the sound. I got the keys of the kingdom. Keys of deals with sound. Could it possibly be we have not opened up stuff because we have not discerned the sound? Don't stop playing. Don't stop playing. Could it possibly be we have not shut stuff because we have not perceived the sound? I don't believe that, Apostle. Let's, let's go. Let's go. Keep playing. Elijah, we need a word. I don't feel nothing. Bring me a minstrel that can play in the key of. Then the hand of the Lord came upon him, and he began to prophesy. David, the Philistines have taken your family and your stuff. Can I pursue? No, don't pursue. When you hear the sound of a marching in the mulberry tree, go behind them and conquer them. Don't move until you hear a sound. The sound is in the key of. In Job, it's talking about the morning star and the angelic host that was present singing when God was creating. That was a sound doing creation. Oh, y'all missing this. Why do you think the Bible says, be still and know that I am God? Why, why do you think the Bible talks about quieting your spirit so you can hear the sound? Because the keys of the kingdom deals with sounds of the kingdom. And we unlock different dimensions when we understand different sounds. Are oh, y'all not talking up in here? That's why worship is important. That's why you don't, don't handle worship just, just, oh, I'm just singing. No, you ain't singing. Do you realize God has entrusted you with keys of the kingdom? And we're opening up dimensions in the realm of the spirit that you will never be able to do with your gift, but you will be able to do it with your sound. Why do you think in prayer you shift from English to tongues to sounds? We, 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 the spirit make of sounds, groanings that cannot be uttered. Naturally, you can't make it up. But why? There's a sound that the Holy Ghost is he's producing in your spirit. Things are being unlocked and things are being locked and things are happening because of a sound that is going forth. Why do you think David was out there in the woods tending to the sheep, playing his heart? He understood that there is a key to the kingdom. Why did Jesus say in the book of Revelation, and I give unto you the key of David? And you will open doors that no man can shut. And you will shut doors no man can open. Why is it the key of David? Why is it not the key of apostle? Because apostle Paul did not have the sound. David had the sound. That's why as long as the devil can keep the church with their mouth shut. Long as he can make you feel embarrassed when you're supposed to be worshiping and releasing a sound. Doors that were, were supposed to be open will stay shut because it's going to take a sound. And you don't take the, the sound lightly. Why did Elisha need a mystery? I need a key of the kingdom, not to of. I need something unlocked in the realm of the spirit where my gift can begin to flow. It starts with a revelation. If you never get a revelation, you never move. 
And if you never get a revelation, you do not access the keys of. Because revelation will move you from the place of mediocrity to a deeper place in him. I can't get help. We've established you don't get keys of. Nobody ever gave me a key and said, here's the key of your car. They say it's the keys too. But when I took music, piano, she said, this is the key of A. This is the key of C. Because of deals with sound. C, the keys of will unlock dimensions. The keys to unlock rooms. I give you a key to my office, you can only unlock my office. But if I, give, if I give you the keys of the kingdom, you can unlock dimensions. You're not limited to the earth. Because when he said of, oh, then he said you bind stuff in the earth and the heavens. I don't know how much they can handle this. How many caught that? Okay, all right, all, all right. Thank you, Sister Brittany. Stay over there, though. Go over to Ephesians chapter 1. The Bible says, I believe it's over in Amos, I'm not sure. It may not be Amos, but he said, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Hosea, thank you, sir. Hosea, my people are destroyed. For, see, you're destroyed for a lack of knowledge, but you only advance by revelation. Knowledge will keep you from being destroyed, but revelation will keep you advancing. Let, let, let me read this. Ephesians 1 and 16, are you there? Apostle Paul says, I do not cease giving thanks for you while making mention of you in my prayers. Verse 17, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you a spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him. See, you don't just need wisdom. You don't just need knowledge, but you need a revelation. Because, see, you can have wisdom, you can have knowledge, and you can be stuck, and you can be stale, and you can be stagnated. But once you get a revelation, you cannot stay in the same place. Revelation always shifts and causes movement. Knowledge can puff up. It can make people proud. They can get haughty, but a revelation will always move you. Once you get a revelation, first of all, of who Jesus really is, revelation of the sound that needs to be coming forth, then things start to open up and shift and you begin to see things like you've never seen them before. What do you think happened when Jacob got a revelation to skin the stick? and put it in the watering trough. So when the animals came to mate, they would see an image that would get imprinted in them and they would produce animals that were speckled and spotted. Revelation did that and caused him to be prosperous. That revelation made him prosperous. He had made a vow to God. What, see, when he made a vow, God gave him a revelation. And it was the revelation that changed his life. That when he left Laban, he sent so much stuff to his brother, Esau. Esau, like, I'm blessed too. I don't need this stuff. But he sent all this stuff because he was so blessed. Why was he blessed? It wasn't because he worked for his father-in-law. His father-in-law was ripping them off. It was because God gave him a revelation. Yes. See, you don't need more knowledge and more wisdom. You need a revelation because it is the revelation that will move you into the plans and the purposes of God for your life. Nothing shifts without a revelation. Okay. I 
I've been praying and I've been doing all this and I just don't know what to do. You need a revelation. He just told us how revelation comes. God has to do it, right? I'm going to read that one more time. Ephesians 1 and 16. I'm read it one more time because some of y'all are looking at me. I can't give you the revelation. I can teach by revelation, which I do, but I can't give you the revelation that's going to move you. He said he do not cease to give thanks, da, 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 17. That, what is he praying for the church of Ephesus? That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you a spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him. Well, we know that there is no spirit of revelation. There is no spirit of knowledge. There is no spirit. He is. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of wisdom. He is the spirit of revelation. He is the spirit of knowledge. Right? So there ain't no different spirit for every attribute. It's Holy Spirit. So the way that you get a revelation is spend time with Holy Spirit. Amen. Praying in the Spirit and then listening to what the Spirit has to say. A lot of times we pray, but we don't listen. Revelation comes through listening. Oh, I'm done. I got my praying. Got my 15 minutes. Let me jet. No, see, you, you ain't even finished. That ain't how revelation comes. Revelation comes by listening. Turn your cell phone off. Turn your TV off. Go get in the dark. Go get somewhere where it's quiet, where you can hear. Because that is the way the revelation shows up in silence. Not you keep e ba 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 e ba ba ba. No, you gotta shut up so you can hear. God is trying to tell you something. I don't know how to do this. I don't understand it. I don't know the next move. I don't know this. How many know it's somebody that knows it? I don't know what else to do with this child. They don't listen. I don't beat them. I don't put them in time out. I don't know what to do. How many know that the one that created them know what to do with them? You're not listening. You talk too much. You treat the Holy Spirit like you treat your friends. They can't get a word in inchwise. Be quiet. Junior was getting in trouble at school when he was a peewee. My mama, we were working. My mama is at that school every day. Every day picking him up, bringing him home. I said, I'm going to kill him. Don't kill him. <laughs> He's just a child. Don't y'all beat him. No, he getting beat. We done did everything we know to do. We done beat them, punished them, everything. Holy Spirit say, this is the problem. Don't let them look at no more wrestling. No, no video games. Take all them little wrestling men from them. Because there's something stirring them up. Went to school like an angel. We ain't had no more trouble. But in the natural, we wouldn't have thought of that. But the Holy Spirit gave us a revelation. Some of you just trying to do all the natural things. No, you need to listen. Holy Spirit will give you a revelation how to deal with that. That's what just pertains to child. He give you a revelation with anything. I don't know how to do this job. I'm overwhelmed. Get in silence. What you can't do in 10 days of preparation, the Holy Spirit will give you in an hour of listening. Oh, there is no problem that he does not know the answer to. And see, like I said, that game deep, breathe. Oh, I learned very early in life. Cars broke down. I ain't no mechanic, never been shown how to work on a car. My wife is a witness. I would pray and say, Holy Spirit, teach me how to do this. Teach me how to put this alternator on. Go out there, me and him. Next thing you know, that thing firing up. Teach me how to do this. Lock the keys in the car. Te how am I going to get in here? Holy Spirit say, take a coat hanger, make it into an L. Put it down in there like a Slim Jim. I'm like, what? This ain't strong enough. Oh, unlock. 
In the natural, I didn't know that. But see, he gave me a revelation. See, we're trying to follow natural stuff. No, you need to be quiet and let the Holy Spirit teach you how to, how to, how to, how to I always say pastor, how to parent that child that you want to throw out the window at night. Stop fussing and listen. Your spouse ain't, ain't lining up like you know they supposed to in the word. Be quiet. Stop talking about what they ain't doing. Listen, God will show you what you need to do. Y'all don't want to talk. Revelation is not limited to just the Bible. It, 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 he is the God of creation. There have been many times I say, God, I don't know what to do. I need to hear from you. I need a revelation. He give me a revelation. I know I'm about out of time. Listen, when we bought our first house, my credit was so jacked up back then. Lord, have mercy in the 90s. Ooh, that was the Lord. I didn't have a hospital bill. I had pages of hospital bill on my credit. And so the, the financial consultant we was working with, he was like, well, until you get your credit to a certain place, you, you can't get this house right here. It's a brand new house. And I say, okay. I told God, I say, I was in prayer. I said, God, I need a revelation. And the Holy Spirit say, everywhere that the sole of your feet is treading, I is giving it to you. Listen to me. So I called my financial consultant. I say, listen, I just need to walk through the house. I ain't asking you to do nothing. I just need to walk through the house. Am I lying? We met up over there, walked through the house, did what the Lord told me. Financial consultant started looking crazy. It's like the, ch the channel change. He said, I can get y'all in this house today. I'm like, today? He like, today. He like, I got an idea. He said, let's do a lease purchase agreement for a year, and then you can buy it after that one year. We got in the house. We bought the house after that year. Closed on it, bought it. I could have said, oh, we got to wait till all this cleared up. We, we, we ain't going to be able to get the house. No, the Holy Spirit say, walk through it. Everywhere the sole of your feet has tread, and I've given it to you. What happened? He gave me a revelation. It moved some stuff. Our house we're living in now, the company that was going to finance it shut down a couple of days before closing. And my broker, like, I don't know what we're going to do. I said, I know what we're going to do. I said, baby, let's go up there to our house. See, you got to understand, we hadn't closed on the house, but I was writing that new address on my tithe envelope. That was my house. I know what the Lord said. I told the guys in the trailer, because it was a new, new build, they would build a new house, they give us the key to our house. He said, oh, here, take as long as you want. They, they knew it was our house. I said, honey, you go upstairs in war, I'm going to boil down here. We stayed up there about an hour longer, just praying taking authority over them hindering forces, binding them up. We just stayed up there to the glory was released in that house. I say, it's done. She said, oh, it's done. We locked our house up, gave the key back to the contractor. Soon as I pulled up in the driveway, parking lot of my mom's apartment, my broker was called. He said, I don't know what happened. He said, I got two lenders that's finding that, wanting to find you. He said, you got to pick which one you want to go with. He said, closing is going to be a da 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 this. What happened? God gave me a revelation. Yes. Revelation moved things. You cannot limit yourself to your natural knowledge and wisdom. I don't care how smart you are. Because how many know Holy Spirit smarter than the PhD, D, 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 D? Praise the Lord. I'm out of time. I'm not out of word. Lord, have Thank you for watching Transforming Lives. We hope that this message has been a blessing to you. Our mission is to raise up a body of believers that demonstrates the power of the word in every arena of life. Sowing a seed to our ministry will help to fulfill our mission. There are multiple ways to give to WLCI. You may text to WLCIG to 54244 or give through our website at www dot wordlifecenter.org 
Or you may also send a seed offering to Post Office Box 293, Kannapolis, North Carolina, 28082. The Word of God says, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Thank you in advance for supporting Word Life Center International. Worship and warfare. See, there come a time you got to get off your face and pick your sword up. And there come a time you got to put your sword down and get on your face and worship. David is the two W's, the worshiper and the warrior. And so when I'm talking about Akia David, in the east, keys were huge. And they wore them on their shoulders. And so they represented authority. So people knew if you had authority based on your key. But so this, this, this big key can lock some stuff up that we don't need getting out. How many know there are some stuff that does not need to get out? And we can open up some stuff that no man can come and shut because that, that flow needs to keep moving. Right? So this is done with a key, just like Matthew 16, 18, I will give unto you the keys. You getting this? From the author of Occupy comes the new bestseller, Capacity. The ability to hold and handle what has been given. Order your copy of Apostle Jeff Sanders' newest book, Capacity, now available at Amazon.com. Capacity is available on paperback and also on Kindle. Let's stay connected. We have multiple ways for you to connect with us. Please follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. For more information about our ministry, visit us online at wordlifecenter.org or call us at 704-298-0845. We here at WLCI would love for you to come visit us where our pastors, Jeff and Michelle Sanders, teach the uncompromised Word of God. Their mission is to raise up a body of believers that demonstrate the power of the Word in every arena of life. Come visit us at 1124 Rosewood Avenue in Kannapolis, North Carolina. Thank you for joining us today in Transforming Lives. We pray that the message has blessed you and that it has pulled you closer to God and His Word. Until next time, remember to be transformed by the renewing of your mind.